friends, I'm Susan, and welcome to my home. Hey everybody, and welcome back. Today we're going to be making crock-pot pinto beans and homemade biscuits. Both are very simple and easy and quick, as long as you get the pintos in the crock-pot that morning and let them cook all day long. So, ponytail up, let's get to cooking. It's early morning, and I'm about to start some pintos in the crock-pot. A lot of people don't know that you can do pintos in the crock-pot, but you have to do them a certain way and they turn out just like as if you'd put them in a pressure cooker or something like that or you know basically you're going to cook them all day um, i have not soaked my beans i have just rinsed them off so they have not been soaked i have basically two cups of beans that have been rinsed but not soaked i'm going to go ahead and put them in the crock pot the next thing is lowry seasoning I put some Lowry seasoning in the pinto beans. Of course, a nice big piece of ham. So that goes in the pinto beans. Now what you want to do is fill up the crock pot with water. I put about eight cups of water in with the two cups of pinto beans. And you're wanting a little bit more than two to three times more water. Okay, that looks, that looks good. <clears throat> I don't know if you can really see, it's about twice the size of the pinto beans. So you've got one part pinto beans, a good two parts water easily. And then that will all cook down today while it's going. Uh, you can add some salt if you want to right now, and some pepper. The Lowry's is gonna do a lot of that seasoning for you. And then put the top on. And you plug that in and put it on high and let it cook for about eight hours. I will come in this afternoon and check it to make sure that it is bubbling up nicely. If it's got a little too much water in it, then I might remove the top and let it cook with the top off for 30 minutes. But usually it's about perfect. It makes its own juice and everything, uh, just like you would if you did them on top of the stove. See you back after work. We'll be making some biscuits to go with this. Okay, I just got home from work. I'm going to check on the pintos. And they're looking whoo, really good. They're fogging up my lens. My goodness gracious. Let me get me a spoon. Look at that. See how good that is? Look, it's got the juice in it and everything. The ham is in there flavoring it up. And everything's looking good on the pintos. So they are done. They're nice and soft. They're nice and big. See? Good. So now the next thing we need to do is let that keep warm while we make the biscuits. The biscuit recipe is really easy. We have two cups of self-rising flour. I use one stick of butter, salted butter. I use one tablespoon of Crisco, and I usually get the kind that are in the sticks like the margarine, and three-fourth cup of milk. So what you want to do is you want to make sure your butter is cold. And you want to put this in your container with the flour. and you want to start cutting it in, okay? So you're just going to use your cutter and go down into it, and it'll make little pats, basically. You're going to keep doing that. Over and over again, until it makes into pebble size, pea, pea size pebbles, basically. All right, now, some people cut theirs with a knife. Some people just do it with their fingers. I like to keep it as cold as possible. That way it'll make the biscuits flakier. And they'll be uh, nice and, and uh, moist on the inside from all the butter that's going to be in this. 
and you know I like butter. I like to get this cut in pretty much most of the way before I add the Crisco or the shortening. All right, now I'm gonna add in the Crisco and I'm gonna basically cut it in and it's real soft and it won't take but a second to do that. But it does make the biscuits um, moister. It just gives the biscuits a little something. I've done it without the Crisco and that little bit of Crisco, even though it isn't much, makes all the difference. Okay. Can you see all that? They're about pea size. Pea size pieces of butter in there right now. A couple bigger ones, but that's okay. They'll just make more fluff. Next thing I'm going to do is add the milk. And I just put it in. Then I use a fork just to stir it up. And you'll see it come together here in a minute. And it will be moist. It won't be extremely dry. It'll be sticky, basically. But that's what you want. And like I said, I'm going all the way around the bowl to get it to stick to itself. And it's not gonna form a perfect little ball. You're gonna have to use your fingers and your hands to get it to form up. So now it's about time for the hands. I brought out a large cutting mat that I use to roll my dough with, or to do my biscuits. I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on it, and leave a little bit out here for me to dip my hands in if I need it. And then I'm going to basically scoop as much of the ball together as I can. Like I said, it's kind of raggy-taggy, but that's okay. They're going to be awesome. Okay. You may need to get a little bit of flour on your hands and just press the ball down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing the layers. And that'll help bring the dough together. And it looks like it might fall apart, but it won't. You'll just keep putting it back. So I'm going to put the first one and double it. Okay, then I press it all together. And then I do the second one and double it and press it down. I like to do at least five. That way we have five different layers or ten layers, however you want to look at it. Okay, and there's third. There's the fourth. And then here's the last, last layer I'm going to do right now. Okay, now we're going to press it out to about half an inch. Because they do rise up quite a bit. And I think about half an inch is about the right guesstimation here. You could go down as close to us a fourth, but I like to have it a little bit bigger than that. Okay, I like to use a middle size biscuit cutter. Um, I've got a three three set biscuit cutters, a big one, a lot smaller one, and the middle one. I like the middle one. Got them on Amazon, love them. And then all you'll need to do is press down and then hold it in whenever you bring it up. Do not twist. Because if you twist, that'll seal the edges, and you want it to get nice and fluffy and rise up. Okay, and it looks like I'm going to make another biscuit or two out of the leftovers, though. Look at this. I had quite a bit. I keep forgetting that's a small one. I could probably make two more out of that. And basically, you just put it together. You don't have to do the layers again because it's already kind of layered up. Just put it together. And 
and then press down. Two biscuits out of this. I don't mind. You can also hand form them. Some people like to hand form them too, which you know, that's what I'm doing to these two that are leftovers. And that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is transfer them over to our baking sheet. And what we're going to do is make sure that they are touching the sides. Now, if you had a lot of biscuits, you could put one in the middle. It might not get as done as the ones on the outside, but it doesn't matter. It'll be good just the same. See, got a ring of biscuits going in. Okay, oven is preheated to 350. Let's get those biscuits in the oven. Again, I put it on the middle rack. And I'm going to time them for about 10 minutes to begin with. And then come back and check to see how brown they are. Okay, it's been 10 minutes since I put the biscuits in. Let's go and look and see how they're doing. I don't know if you can see how much those have risen in the oven, but they are like layered biscuits like you'd get out of a can. They're so good. Okay, I am going to turn it around so the ones that were in the front get to the back. And then set it on another kitchen timer. This time for six minutes. And we'll see how they look in six minutes. All right, they're getting there. They need probably another four to five minutes, I would think. They're still not as brown on top as I would like. Now it's time to put the plate together. Let's get a biscuit and some pintos. And we always like to use some pickled okra, which this is the best we've ever ate. Can't make them that good. Whenever I can't make them that good, I'll buy them. No shame in my game. And some onions. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. And there we go. It's ready to eat. I hope you enjoyed today's video with the pinto beans and the biscuits. The pinto beans are so good, and it's such an inexpensive meal to make, and it fills you up. Now, usually on the pintos, I put a little bit more Lowry seasoning on top of them, and I put some ketchup on them. My husband, on the other hand, nope, salt and pepper, that's all he wants on them. For the biscuits, my husband actually likes them not quite as brown as I got them today. He likes them a little bit uh, less brown. but they're good any way you do them. Until next time, have a great week. Please like and subscribe. There's more to come.